This is Mr. Anger with another video for Math 76. And uh, this particular concept is called Algebraic Expressions. And we're going to cover some things that are covered on page 14 through 16 and actually talk about the story problems that are there on page uh, 15. Let's talk about how to I'm gonna move this out of the way here. Let's talk about how to take an expression that's in words and turn it into algebraic symbols, okay? If I look at this, all right, I automatically know that added means plus, right? And yields is equals results in, okay, are all similar expressions that we can use the symbol equals. So we can substitute that. Now, in all of these, you see something here called a number. See those key words? A number. A number. A number. Okay? That's the unknown. We can use X. We could use A. We could use Y or Z. <clears throat> I happen to like N just because N kind of sticks with me as being a number. So I'm going to use N, but you can use X if you want. Yields 17. And then here at the beginning, I can put 5. All right? So 5 added to a number equals 17. Now let me tell you a little secret here, because you know that 3 plus 5 is the same thing as 5 plus 3, right? We call that the commutative property of addition. So I could, and maybe in the score key, they would actually write this as a number, and then adding 5 to that equals 17. And guess what? It's the same thing, okay? So it's not that this is more right than this or this is more right than this. Now, if we had one that was taking away subtraction, that does make a difference, okay? But here with addition, these are both acceptable answers. Let's look at this one. A number divided by 5 plus 3 is 21. Let's start with the easy one here. Equals 21. We're going to start with a number divided by 5. So I'm going to use n. I could say n divided by 5 plus 3 equals 21, okay? Because in the order of operations, you should always do the, multi the dividing, multiplying and dividing, before you do addition and subtraction. Remember that? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally from the first video in this piece. So this would be acceptable. Now, the score key probably does not have it written this way. They are probably going to write it as n over 5. Because whenever we have a fraction like 12 over 3, that means divide. 12 divided by 3, and you would get 4. So this is another way of writing a number n divided by 5. We're going to add 3 plus 3 equals 21. Okay? So the fact that they put a comma here makes clear that this is a separate thing. We're not dividing by 5 plus 3, okay? So we're not putting 5 plus 3 underneath here. The plus 3 is off to the side. All right, let's take this one. The quotient of 32 and the sum of a number in 3 equals 8. Now we've got to think back. Remember, what does quotient mean? Quotient is the answer to a division problem. Do you remember that? Answer to division. So we're dividing two things. And again, I'm going to use this type of division. This is what's most often used as you move through your math courses and get on into algebra. So a division means you're going to have a numerator over a denominator. So the quotient of, so I'm going to put 32 on the top, okay? And then, notice it says, I'm going to, the, equal, the equals part here at the end, that's easy, okay? Equals 8. But notice it says the quotient of 32 and, now what are we dividing by? So 32 is being divided by something, it's div being divided by, I'm going to put this in parentheses, look at this. The sum of a number and 3. So it's kind of like we have a little algebraic expression inside a bigger algebraic expression. Just this part, the sum of a number and three, sum means plus a number n and three. 
So just this n plus 3 becomes the denominator here, n plus 3, and I have 32 in the numerator, okay? 32 over n plus 3 equals 8. Um, you could leave parentheses around that. I typically wouldn't, but that would not make it wrong, okay? These three, <clears throat> I think, are actually a little harder than what you'll be doing leading up to the checkup, but then on the checkup, they have three questions that are very similar to these, except with different numbers and slightly different wording, okay? But if you study these examples and you feel like you know what you're doing, I think you'll do well on the checkup. Now I want to talk about page 15, and there are two story problems there that I think would be helpful for us to talk our way through. So open your pace to page 15. And uh, number four says, Pudge's mother is 44. She is two years older than three times Pudge's age. Write an equation to find Pudge's age, okay? <clears throat> so we're going to let X equal Pudge's age. Then we're going to make an expression, okay? And it says Pudge's mother is 44. So we're going to say equals 44. We know that she is two years older than three times Pudge's age. Now think about this. If I just did 3x where x is Pudge's age, is she equal, is her age the same as three times Pudge's age? And the answer is no. She's actually two years more than this. So the, these are not equal. So I need to add two to this side of this equation to keep this balance. Remember, equals always means the two sides are equal to each other. So it's kind of like a scale. You know, they have to be balanced. So to balance this equation and keep it balanced, three times Pudge's age, add 2 to that, and I would have his mother's age of 44, okay? Let's look at um, number 5. There are 12 girls in a youth group. That's 4 less than twice the number of boys. So we're going to let x equal. The one thing we don't know is the number of boys. Now this problem tells us that there are 12 girls. Is, okay, so the is or the are in this case, that's what comes after the equals. There are 12 girls. This is four less than twice the number of boys. So I can do 2x, two times, twice means times, twice the number of boys, because we're letting x be the number of boys. So two times the number of boys. Now, is the 12 girls the, twice the number of boys? And the answer is no. This is actually four less than twice. So that means I have to take twice the number of boys and subtract four in order to have an equation now. So twice the number of boys, take away four from that, and I would be able to find the number of girls to be 12. Now, I don't think in this case, yeah, you're not actually solving the equation. They just want you to come up with an equation, all right? Um, and again, they tell you to use x. I would probably use, you know, b here and p on the other one, but uh, it doesn't really matter. That's the thing. With, math, with algebra, you can use any letter, generally speaking, to represent an unknown number. So I hope that helps you um, be able to do the problems on page 15 and 16 and be ready to do the checkup on page 17 and 18.